just arrived at the upper four-wheel drive parking lot. This is obviously the end of the line as far as vehicles go. And we'll have a quick look at the trailhead map and see what it has to say. So here we are in the Sangre de Cristo wilderness. It's kind of a big overview look and map right there. Really very useful but over here we've got things a little more zoomed in some warnings explanations um, so at this point we are actually still off of the map but we'll be getting on and then we won't be doing broken hand pass we'll actually be on the south colony trail we'll come across here and up here and then assuming the weather is friendly after we go by the Colony Lakes, we are gonna head for the Big Daddy Arete, the Ellingwood Arete, and uh, get ourselves up the needle. That is the goal for tomorrow, assuming the weather cooperates. We're headed up the closed section of the four-wheel drive trail, and it has been a beautiful scene. Surprising the level of extra exertion with the climbing gear in tow but I think it'll be well worth it because we've got some special adventures ahead we have just hiked ourselves up the pathway to the sky and uh, I'm feeling pretty excited now also here is that trail junction right here a little tough to read I think Humboldt Peak is that one behind the trees Got the ninja with me here, so we are going to uh, freaking chop our way up there and kick some ass. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Um, and it's quite a beautiful scene. If I do say so myself. A little side note when you're coming up here on the right hand side, if you want a class two ascent, there is Humboldt Peak. switch gears take off our jackets enjoy the sun and get ready to crank some serious summit we are making our way quickly up the south colony lake trail it's working out pretty good for us we have just cranked up uh, the biggest part of a pretty steep section it looks like we're gonna get a little break as well as some serious inspiration here right uh, right at the top So there's Rudy pushing his way to the epic zone. Woo! The hard work is paying off. I would say we have officially just creeped onto the edge of the adventure zone. Although this spur trail was rather vague and required us to push through dense willows, it was the most efficient and direct approach to reach the beginning of our route proper, the Ellingwood Arete. The route begins by ascending a large ramp above the large black spot in the middle of the frame and then continuing along a black gully up and to climber's right. Wow, will you cruise that fast?
you have just gone up the higher of the two kind of black areas. We went above the first black area and then we went pretty much right inside this uh, the second gully that was black and uh, we're just about to turn the corner. Maybe right here in this big crack. I think it's scarier watching than it is climbing. <laughs> Definitely coming up left of the knob and then traversing almost totally horizontally to it is the way to go. We just came from there. Alrighty, well, we, uh, we finally got to some really juicy technical areas. Um, it's looking just like the topo we have, so feeling very confident that, uh, that we've got a good line up there. So yeah, the ninja is kicking his way up to the uh, to the excitement zone, that's for sure. Um, just to give you a little view of the scene. Pretty spectacular. Yeah, so the ninja's gonna go up there. And that's where our first belay will be. We did a little simul climb to kind of keep security good, set a little gear. Um, but uh, it looks like we're really going to be in the business next. Save me, ninja! Footprints up here. There's some snow. Well, I'm gonna get some really as soon as I can. Oh yeah! Keton! Careful, careful, careful. It's 14,000 feet in all. It's all a lot of work. Look out for ice.
Summit's like 10 yards away, man. Woo! Woo! Yeah. Yeah, buddy. Woo! That was epic. All right, pulled it off. Cranking out a quick little summit pano while the wind is slightly less bad. Me and the ninja cranked it. And uh, that is Crestone Peak across there. We will not be doing the traverse today. Not with the extra 30 pounds of rock climbing gear. But boy, is it beautiful. That's Humboldt Peak. Actually, back there, where you can see the trees and it kind of looks like shadow is back to the car. The ninja and I have just found the key. You come down that ridge where I was shooting the ninja there's been lots of Karens. Apparently there's some misleading Karens on the ridge where the ninja is now. But if you look down and to the left here, there is a very pronounced trail. Yeah, that's definitely it. So uh, we are both in agreement that that is our way home. We feel like we're on our way down the West Gully. Definitely some class three, as you can see the ninja maneuvering quite a bit. So it's very important when you're descending this gully, you'll see a large Karen. And actually this colorful Karen is what caught our eye. And then you actually switch gullies and start heading back more to the east or toward Colony Lakes right where you can see the ninja now. I could see it being fairly easy to get lost here if you're not paying attention. I would always urge you to use a uh, GPS track on a route like this. I'll mark in the video where we dropped into one gully over and uh, it, that is not the end of the story. We continue traversing left toward Colony Lakes. You can just barely see the ninja down there doing some pretty stout class three and that is going to land us a much closer to the pass because the big deal about this whole thing is you do not want to end up on the west side of the pass with your car on the wrong side Keep cutting left. If you find yourself going down, down, down gullies, you're gonna end up on the wrong side of Broken Hand Pass. Very important to keep looking left, try to work left across the gullies as much as you can. It's gonna be hard class three. There are many Cairns showing the traverse, but they do kind of blend in. So right here, you can see where the ninja is going the trail forks and he's going to take that left fork and keep uh, right up against Broken Hand Pass. Oh, there is a really nice trail starting now. And you can clearly see it and the ninjas just cruising along it no problem lots of Karens plenty of trail so I think we're totally out of the woods on the technical side of things it does look like the trail continues down quite a bit again just behind 
or to the west of the saddle that we will cross Broken Hand Pass. The ninja is at Broken Hand Pass proper right now. And uh, the trail leading up to it is pretty clear. Uh, well, Karen, a beautiful spot. So Rudy and I have avoided the uh, iced up snow, but that is not to say it was easy at all. The Ninja and I have slid all over the place on this broken hand pass. We have broken hands. So don't think you're done when you get out of the technical spots because the loose rock over these giant steps is uh, for real. Just a little bit of haze with the smoke from distant forest fires. Pretty much finished off the uh, loose, horrible sliding descent there. I'm grateful for that. And uh, I don't think Colony Lakes are really even too far away either. So another good thing, but boy, that even that little bit of snow, it is treacherous. So hopefully you won't be here when it's snowy, or if you just maybe stick some uh, micro spikes in your bag if you have any idea, because we had a snow back in September and it's still here, so not good. The standard route is pretty complicated, is what I'm going to say about that. Seeing the horizon and all those needles, stuff you got to deal with. It was a little more difficult than anticipated. The, uh, Flat tire did not help. And it was really cold on the technical climbing sections, which, which made it a little tough, but we pulled it off in good style. I'm gonna call it good. And uh, we will see you on the next adventure. Hopefully that'll be soon.